Morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and Johnny Hunt's a liar, or Guidepost is a liar. Coming up next. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Drop a comment. And tell me literally how you are doing. Tell me. I want to know. It's part of the uh, analytics. No, but really, when you comment, it does help the whole algorithm out. Supposedly, it tells people, you know, interaction with this video is good. So please like and comment if you don't mind. At least if you like the video, you can dislike it too. That's fine. We're going to be looking at Nam and Johnny Hunt, Kevin Ezell, and the guidepost thing solutions uh, investigative report, 300 page plus investigative report that was voted by the Southern Baptist Convention messengers in 2021 and in Nashville. I was actually in that conference. I am an SBC pastor. Don't worry, we're not woke. Forgive me, my allergies are pretty heinous. So if I sound a little gross or nasally or I touch my face more than usual, that's why. I've actually done a lot of recording lately because of that. Um, although I had technical difficulties on Saturday, my, our internet was completely out. I was going to have a conversation with Jason Whitaker from Dear Woke Christian. Hopefully that will happen later this week for this Saturday. Anyway. So I'm biased, you're biased, everybody's biased. But we should not show partiality, right? Because we all have an angle, all have a life that we've come from, male, female, uh, light skin, dark skin, medium skin, immigrant, not when we were born, all this stuff, all these things play into who we are. And that's, there's, there's, I'm not more right than you, or you're more right than me because of how we look or anything like that. We're all made in God's image. We all, everybody, right? Like I actually mean that. And so because of that, we have then rights and freedom and, and liberty and the things that God has given. This is why America is so great because these things are recognized from God. They're not given by the government, but rather recognized that already exist. That being said, that's kind of the groundwork we need to set because sometimes people will watch this and, you know, this will probably get more traction because it's sexual abuse. I know I had a Julie Royce, John MacArthur, John MacArthur video a couple months ago and just people commenting and, you know, these, this is great. Thanks. Good point. Didn't hear this. Oh, da, da, da. And okay. You know, accolades are always nice. And then you have people who are like, this is terrible. You're the worst person ever, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, did you watch the video? Cause I didn't take really any sides. Uh, but again, I'm biased. I like John MacArthur more than Julie Royce. Okay. Uh, I think she's a liar, but that doesn't mean John MacArthur couldn't lie. That doesn't mean he's not sinful, et cetera, et cetera. That's video. This video is not about that. Go ahead and watch that if you want to. It's uh, put in the description and it'll pop up above. That being said, the issue here is sexual allegations and misconduct again. Johnny Hunt, who is a prominent name, probably the most prominent name in the uh, report, as far as I know, said this about the allegations. He said, during my 50 years of ministry, I've always had a singular goal to share the gospel, the good news, gospel, of Jesus Christ with a broken world. He goes further, talks about men and women, North American Mission Board, serving Christ. Okay, I've resigned from my position in NAM. So this is on the 22nd. Today's the 24th of May. He resigned on the 13th of May, so a couple weeks ago, almost a couple weeks ago. To be clear, my heart breaks for all victims of abuse, he says. I support rights of abuse victims and heard and respected and made whole. Lastly, he says, Southern Baptist navigating this challenge of season and challenging season must remember it is the truth that will set us free. So he's talking about the guidepost report that was an investigative thing that had was set out third party based on a 2019 Houston Chronicle article talking about multiple abuses from pastors and ministers, clergy, quote unquote, and others. We don't call ourselves clergy, but whatever. We're not Roman Catholic. Uh, and all these things from 2019. Now, what they didn't pay attention, much, much attention to was the fact that there were repeat offenders. You know, Bill Smith goes to this church, then he goes to First Baptist, then he goes to, you know, community church, and then he goes to Bible church, and they're all Southern Baptist, and it's like reporting, and he's doing evil stuff, but he, he did it four different times or seven different times. It doesn't mean it's any less heinous and wicked and sinful. It is, absolutely. But the numbers are inflated is what I'm getting at. Responded, 
to 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 the report. He says he didn't see the report though, which is interesting, even though he's alleged in it. I'm not sure I, I fully understand what he's saying, but he said, "I've resigned." Of course, I'm aware of the guidepost issued a report earlier today. I did not see a copy of the report before before today. So he resigned a couple weeks ago, and then he only sees the report on the 22nd. So he resigns on the 13th, sees a report on the 22nd, and then doesn't know that he's alleged with an assault, which we'll read about in an article from the Tennessean here in a moment. Kevin Ezell's response, following May 22nd release of the SBC Sexual Abuse Task Force report, the report North American Mission Board, who's the CEO and the president is Kevin Ezell. He's pretty slippery. He's he's kind of like a Russell Moore kind of guy, Big Eva guy, circle the wagons guy. Personally, I don't trust him. The work of the task force is important for our convention and healing of survivors. The details of the report we just now beginning to process, the egregious and deeply disturbing. <clears throat> All true, right? Just because you don't trust somebody doesn't mean you can't still uh, believe or um, support what he or she does, right? All the way. I mean, yes, that might sound contradictory, but it is what it is, as they say. We are praying for the survivors and their families, churches, wisdom, discernment, humility for those in the report for God's glory. Okay. May 13th, prior to the knowledge of the report's detailed allegations, Johnny Hunt resigned. So that doesn't look good for Johnny Hunt. Like there's there's a strike against Johnny Hunt. He's like, oh, this report's coming out. Convention's next month, about a month away. Yeah, I'm going to bounce out. I mean, okay. But like, why are you doing that? That's a little weird. And then the report comes out. Hey, Johnny Hunt did some stuff. Oh, me. Because keep in mind, Johnny Hunt used to be a president of uh, the SBC. We'll see more in a moment. Prior to May 13th, I was not aware of any alleged misconduct. So Ezel says he didn't know Johnny Hunt did anything or any alleged conduct. All right. So now we have the Tennessean article. He's reading it. This is a non-Christian. I don't like to use the term secular because it's not what it is. Ultimately, it's, it's non-believing. Report that came out less than 48 hours ago. Historic report includes allegation against former SBC president and explosive details about how the denominational leaders work to avoid liability rather than help victims of sexual abuse. So keep in mind, all of this is heinous and evil and wicked. And we're going to see more clearly from the scripture why this is heinous, even evil and wicked, and not just because the culture currently says so. Because the culture didn't always say uh, all these sexual misconduct things were bad. Like very shortly ago, and still in many parts of the world today, the culture says, you know, having um, mistresses, having multiple wives, having uh, groping and all this. I mean, it's very prevalent in many other countries. Now, again, somebody might hear that and be like, oh, you're just defending it. No, don't be a fool. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying culturally, culturally cannot be our barometer. It cannot be the foundational element, the cornerstone in which we build our morality and ethical life. It has to be God's word, right? And most of these cultures, whether it's South America or Asia or Europe or Africa, these places and even in America, having mistresses in Europe and other places and groping women and, you know, catcalling and all this other stuff is, is heinous and evil in different degrees, Okay. Does it make it right and does it make it wrong because of the culture? God's word says it's wrong. So let's keep that in mind, please, as we progress. Southern Baptist Convention in Nashville. So this was last year. I was there. I voted for this, um, to have this task force, among others. It wasn't like any particular. I was a messenger, so I get to vote. I hold the, the whole thing. Remember, the SBC is a bottom-up organization. So if you go to the convention and you're an SBC member in a church, you talk. You talk to the platform. The platform is the elites. These are the big Eva people that have the power. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but they've continually shown themselves vacant and void of any real tangible Christ-likeness in many ways, okay? Including shutting down people and that whole thing. There's a circle the wagons mentality. And sadly, they're now going to take the offensive when they were doing this, it seems, with this Tennessee, Tennessee article about Guidestone, Guide Post, solutions guidestones the financial thing for the spc guides post guide post solutions they're going to circle the wagons even though they were doing the very same thing 10 12 years ago apparently 15 years ago yeah 
So SBC leaders perpetuate a cycle of abuse for two decades, ignoring sexual abuse, dismissing recommendation of reform, et cetera. 300 page report guide post solutions contains explosive details. Largest Protestant denomination. I'm going to put this article in the description. So if you're not, you can look at it. Meanwhile, leaders spoke poorly about abuse survivors behind their backs. Now, this was something there was a leaked audio that certainly wasn't leaked unintentionally, but right before the convention last year by Russell Moore, who left the year, I'll say about a year ago to dissuade people from voting for Mike Stone, who was the much more conservative candidate, not Ed Litton, who come to find out was a plagiarist and a liar and a thief. But you know, who cares about that? Cause he's still the president, right? Why are we, why do we care about sexual abuse, but we don't care about moral standards for our president? Go figure. Right. Again, why do we care about the sexual abuse victims and all this heinous evil stuff, but we don't care about lying and thieving with the current president, the still president who's not rerunning, thankfully. So go vote for Tom Askell. I am. I'm about 99% sure I'm going to the convention now, which is great. If you do want to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee, by the way. It's like Patreon. It's in the little description. Richard Contra is my handle there. So buy me a cup of coffee if you want to drop me a tip or, you know, five bucks, help out the channel and that sort of thing. Tom Askell is the only man for the job. But this isn't about him. I've done some other articles. And if you want to go look at that, and uh, they did a panel, the SBC presidents, go look that, uh, check that out as well. Back to this, we only we care only about certain sins. We're only par- showing partiality about certain things because ultimately there is no like unforgivable sin other than blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which of course is unbelief. At least that's how I understand that passage. Almost always, internal focus was protecting the SBC from legal liability. This is a quote, and not caring about survivors or creating a plan to prevent sexual abuse within the churches. The guide post says in the report. The report guide post says seventeen recommendations clarify for standards for churches and clergy again we're not roman catholic but whatever guidepost team interviewed 330 people reviewed five terabytes of data from january 2000 to june 2021 for 21 years that's a lot of information it's a lot of information right and more than that let's just get this full thing here more than that we have 86 board member 30 employees elected officials led by the executive committee this year's annual report, on and on and on. Nashville-based Southern Baptist Convention. Make note, there is no basis for Nash- in Nashville. Yes, the ERLC is there. Lifeway was there and so on and so forth. But there's no – the local church <laughs> is the headquarters, right? And it really is. And I don't just mean that kind of tongue-in-cheek. It really – that's what it is, okay? There is no – now they want a hierarchy, and you know we can't we can't get away from hierarchy and patriarchy to a degree. But ultimately, the SBC is a bottom up organization. So if you are SBC, get to the convention, vote, tell people, uh, urge people, support people. If you can't go, go do that. Thirteen point six million members. This is the beginning of a season of listening, lamenting, learning how to address sexual abuse within the convention. But here's the thing. We know how to address it. We have a book. We have the word of God. So how in the world are we not using it? Why in the world are we not using the word? It's silly. It's just, it's just, golly, it's just dumb, people. We resist the temptation to minimize, look away. Great. Scapegoats, uncover the report. It's heinous. It's evil. It's wicked. And it is. And if these things are true... It's wicked, and it should be found out accordingly. I hold the SBC in loose, um, loosely. But if conservative churches like mine, who love the Lord Jesus more than institutionalism and platformism and elitism and Big Eva, if we don't say something and we just leave, the SBC will still be like the PCUSA 100 years from now, raging through the culture and being a total nuisance and ruining the testimony of Christ right? It'll be terrible. It won't be any better. It'll be worse. So fight. Now is the time to fight, people. Now is the time to fight for fidelity. I know some people, oh, we're leaving. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But if they did this 40, 50 years ago, we would not be here, okay? And you may very well not even be saved and, you know, God's sovereignty, blah, blah, blah. But the means, okay? We cannot discount our work that the Lord has called us to. 
Now is the time to fight for truth. Now is the time to stand up and say, that is sin. And if the SBC elites of 10, 12 years ago, who are kind of the same as they are today, not all of them, are hiding this stuff in the guide post report, they've circled the wagons around Ed Litton. They circle the wagons around this guy or this gal, Beth Moore, who's since left. And yet they, they, they turn around and, oh, now we're on the side of the victim. It's very slippery. It's very suspicious. We must resist the temptation to minimize, he says, the Houston Chronicle investigation from 2019. Again, that was something there wasn't a convention in 2020, of course, because, you know, it's 2020. Last fall, executive committee debated for weeks whether to waive attorney and client privilege, privileges. They did. I talked with a lawyer, by the way, Brian Schutte, if you've seen that uh, inter interview. Um, check that out if you haven't seen that. It's really weird, really heinous, really wrong to waive attorney client privileges. But anyway. Um, due to fear of legal liability, lawyers were advising, say nothing, do nothing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <sighs> Allegations against former president. So this is really where it sounds really not good at all. It's very bad. Guidepost investigator says Hunt pulled down a woman's shorts, made sexual comments toward her and pinned her to a couch before groping her violently and kissing her. Later in a separate conversation, he told the woman he would like to have sex with her three times a day. Now that sounds like something a groomed seventh grader would write. I want to have sex with you three times a day. <laughs> I mean, sure, he could say that. He, he might have. I don't know. I wasn't there. You weren't there. Uh, this is an allegation, right? So we can't say for sure it happened or didn't happen. But the point is that it sounds very immature. Now, he might have said it. And it also might just be somebody saying it because they don't know what else to say. They could be lying, right? We have this false witness that does happen. Exodus 23 is pretty clear do not spread false reports do not help a guilty person be be by being a malicious witness so hunt could be guilty and there is guilt here certainly there is wickedness going on and evil that's happened certainly do not follow the crowd in doing wrong though do not follow the crowd in doing wrong we saw this right following the crowd in 2020 didn't we we saw this repeatedly over and over again to say, oh yeah, just gang mob, right? Right, Mob rule, bad news, bad idea. The Lord condemns that. That is bad. It's wicked. We should never do that. For the Lord will not cast us off forever, Lamentations 3 says. Even if he causes grief, he will show compassion according to his abundant love and devotion. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the sons of men. To crush underfoot all the prisoners of the land. To deny a man justice before the Most High. To subvert a man in his lawsuit. Of these, the Lord does not approve. The Lord does not approve of these things. Right? The wickedness showing partiality. And that's really what it is. Because everybody's biased. But showing partiality is not good. Because God is ultimately the judge. He is the one who's created. He is the impartial one and we should seek to be on god's side and the only way to be on god's side is not the warm fuzzies in your chest or to look at the culture you know put up your finger and say uh yeah these christians so-called over here are saying this no what does god's word say what does the text say that's what we need to go to that's what we need to see james 2 if you are fulfilling if you are Fulfilling the royal law, according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's the law, right? That's not the gospel. You are doing well, but a lot of people mix the law and the gospel. It's not the same thing. It's different. If it was the same thing, then, well, <laughs> it's the same thing. And there, there's no reason to have two. But if you show partiality, you're committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors for whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at one point has become guilty of all of it for he who said do not commit murder or do not commit adultery also says do not commit murder but you do not commit adultery but you do commit murder you become a transgressor of the law and then he says for judgment will be merciless to the one who shows no mercy judgment will be shown to you zero mercy if you have no mercy so Johnny Hunt, who's abusing a woman, apparently, or the people who are lying about Johnny Hunt, because he's a big name. We see Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and all these other guys in the in the news media who did do it. But then we have other people to, you know, Brett Kavanaugh and Clarence Thomas who didn't. But the allegations still stick. There's still this stain that you can't get removed, even if it, you're innocent. And it's usually always against guys because, you know, the patriarchy and down with the patriarchy and that whole thing. And, you know, Men are obviously the dominant force, as it were, in sexual 
interaction, right? You know, 99% of the time. And so, you know, rightfully so. Women have their own problems and their own sin. Men have their own problems and their own sin. At this point, we're talking about sexual allegations and things in this way. But James 2 tells us we should not show partiality, right? It's wicked to show partiality. So why are we giving preference to sexual assault victims and yet we don't call to task the same people who are like, I'm grieved at this, to say, Ed Litton, you gotta, you gotta resign, man. You gotta step down. Or, or to tell people and in even the ERLC with the recent abortion ruling in Louisiana, which I looked at, and you can check that out as well. <laughs> Abortion's murder. It's always been murder. And yet we've been hiding it for so long. You know, pro-life cause, and there's 70 pro-life plus the ERLC, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, is against the law that was in Louisiana to ban abortion. They're against it, but we're, we're pro-life. Well, notice there's pro-life and there's abolition. Right. It's like the people who are like, well, we just want to make slavery unthinkable. Just replace slavery with abortion. Right. Slow progress. No abolition of slavery, abolition of abortion. Stop killing babies. Right. And I think most pro-life people, and I just learned this really within the last, I say, six months or less, because last year in June, I was at the convention and people were voting. And I was like, wait, what's going on? Why are we not voting for this abolition because there was a, a resolution to come up and then people stood against it and talking about, you know, incrementalism and like, but we're still killing babies. Like, how are you defending this? But people did. Showing partiality is not good. Right now, we're for the victims, right? And there are real victims. Don't don't hear me and think, drop a comment, not pay attention or not read the video or listen to the video rather, rather and just be like, oh, you're this and this and this, although we're 20 minutes in. You, if you're going to drop a comment, you would have already done it and not listened. But you know, if you see a stupid comment, probably rest assured that person didn't actually watch the video. So anyway, they might have, but probably not. I'm not, I'm not saying I am for the abuser. Clearly not. I'm for God and his word and what he says. Okay. So don't think that that's what's happening here. I'm also not for lying. And there's plenty of people who lie. Do we not think that people lie? Men are liars, which men, quote unquote, men and women right? We all are capable of lying because we're all fallen short of God's glory. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We have to remember that church. We have to remember that God is the one who loves us, who cares for us, and who sacrifices only son for us. You can check these things in the description, the link there. We need to be on the Lord's side. Yes, victims, real sin, but we need to call out all sin. Okay, and we need to stand firmly on God's word, not just, well, because the cultural right now says sexual abuse is wrong. Yes, it is wrong, but it's wrong because God says so, not because the culture says so. Because the culture says pornography is fine, abortion is fine, same-sex marriage is fine, all these other things are fine. So can we call those sins too? Or are we going to show partiality? I mean, oh, that's, that's, we can't really discuss that. Sexual abuse, racism. Yeah, those are bad things. But what about all the other heinous sins or cultural sins? Huh? Are we going to call those out too? Y'all have a great day. Hope you found this helpful. Please like and subscribe. If you have not subscribed, please help me to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, trying to get there, trying to uh, continue to produce good content that's helpful, beneficial, uh, edifying, and teaching. Being against the world for the world, all right? Y'all take care.